if you don't have confidence where that club face is, yeah, you I don't care how beautiful you flow, okay. you ain't doing it. Because the first one that goes in somebody's backyard is the last time you're going to do it. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm in San Diego, California with Ed Lasseter. Hey, Ed. How you doing, bud? Some exciting things coming up on the channel. Ed is going to be one of the teachers at the Milo Lines Golf School that I'm going to next week on Monday, Tuesday. And um, I'm going as a student because I want to see, from a student's point of view, what a golf school is like. I've uh, been uh, running about... I've done about like between 25 and 30 Be Better Golf Schools with about six or seven different instructors. I think it'll be a good learning experience. Plus, I want to get better at my own game too. And Ed and Milo and those guys are really like some of the best that I've worked with. So Ed, today what we're going to talk about is not everyone who's ever played in the game of golf has felt like rotational through it. There has been some players that Certainly. feel like, you know, like a Paul Goidos kind of thing sure. or like Stadler or other people are kind of more punchy. Um, how can somebody decide if, okay, I really, if, if they, how can they decide that being more rotational will make them better? Is there like a test or, or a way to the, figure it I out? Don't, I don't necessarily think there is. I think that everybody, look, it depends. If you're starting out from scratch, it's much easier to get somebody to flex and rotate and because it's better on the body in the long run. Whereas other people who have already played mm -hmm. have a throw and extend motion. To get them to change to a flex and rotator, it's brutally hard. Flex and rotate is like, so I'm bent over this much. Flex and rotate would be, this would be flex and yes, that would and be rotate. rotate. Yes, Rather than, the, the, you said extend a, and slide. Extend and throw, gotcha. right? Oh, throw. Because that's yeah. their power source. That's mm -hmm. what the power source they know, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, it, it is harder on your body to extend and throw mm -hmm. because you're sending something at whatever miles an hour times one pound because the club against your back going the other direction. Okay. It, it, you're going to hurt yourself. Mm. Plus, there is, I can't think of any sport that you rotate that yeah. you do that. Okay. Every single thing you do, you actually have some flex and you're pushing away from your intended target of rotation. Whether you're throwing or you're batting, mm -hmm. Tennis. you don't yeah. ever see anybody go like this to bat. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. The forces kind of counteract more, right? Like everything doesn't go in one direction. It's something, this goes this way, so this can go that way. Exactly. Okay, I got you. And then it, you see everybody that, that, that has a... a a throw and extend motion I don't know do they extend first or throw but they know that if I throw I cannot stay flexed because I'm gonna chunk it so everybody responds by doing this well as soon as I do this I'm swinging this at 90 miles an hour it's become 90 pounds of pressure against my back right and that's how people get hurt and they hurt their hands that way too so if you could inch by inch if you're a, a throw and extender you may not ever be a flex and rotator, yeah. but etch toward that side of the spectrum, it's better on your body in the long run. Okay, so what, what are some, some simple ways at home that people can start to get out of this to this and get a little bit more around, even if they don't become you know, looking like Jacques and Neiman or whatever, but yeah. they do start moving with it a little bit more? Well, first thing I would say is most everybody's power source is their trail hand. Whether the right hand or the left hand, it's always the trail hand. Mm -hmm. If I take the trail hand away and the trail arm, you have to find another way to propel the golf club. Okay. So, go to address. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys you see will suck this in and bend and not turn. Mm -hmm. So, if I make this straight and this straight, go ahead and grab it, mm -hmm. and I make you turn, now I've got you almost at a 90 degree to get to here. Yeah. Now, if I did not allow you to use this hand, mm -hmm. you have to use this as your power source and you got everything you wanted. Oh, okay, gotcha. I'm just taking your power source away. So, so in the Milo Alliance method here, we're talking about foundation one. Okay. So you can shift a little pressure, but I want the right arm, right wrist straight. Exactly. Lots of face control, mm -hmm. lots of pivot as your power source. Okay. Yeah, because normally it would be like bend and sling. Exactly. Right? So you're taking that away. And you can't hit any two better than that. Yeah, that was a good one. But uh, now, you obviously, go around the course like that. But so, but you, you clearly. So how does but, this? But blend that would be the foundation it? of the beginning of it. Oh, okay. Then we add in a lever, which is your right wrist extending or your trail wrist extending back. Oh, okay. And when I say extending back. This is radial, mm -hmm. this is extension. Mm -hmm. I want this thing to extend up your right forearm. Mm -hmm. Now you have to maintain this. Now, obviously, at address, 
the club head to your sternum is let's say four feet. Okay. If I get you here mm -hmm. and I do this, now the club face is closer than four feet. Mm -hmm. I have to make up that distance somehow. Right. If I'm gonna have extension. So I'm going to flex and turn and now I'm gonna get everything I want and all the pressure is on your legs and your backside, not on your back. So even though you're doing this, you're still driving it. That's right. So the club head's closer to your body, so in order to make that up, you go down at it and then come around. That's right. Okay, I got you. So. You can't argue with the contact, yeah, and you certainly good. can't argue with the direction. So, Ed, when people are first doing this, I always wonder this. Should it be, like, chunky, where it's like this, 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 or should you try to kind of blend it? What do you think? Well, it depends on the person, right? Depends on... How far are they on one spectrum size or the other? Uh -huh. So how do we get them? So maybe sometimes you got to piecemeal it, step one, two, three, okay. four, and get them to build some confidence so that then they can start doing it with some flow. I'll agree with you. But if I add flow right now and you're not confident in where that club face is, mm -hmm. you are not going to do it. Okay. I don't care how you flow. I'm going to try parts and pieces a little bit more this time. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Yeah. So here would be an example of this. So let's say that I'm standing here like this and I go foundation one, uh -huh. extend it, chip it. Wow. And there, and there was no throw and there was no release of this. One, extend, turn. Like mm -hmm. that? Yep. Bingo. That was good. Okay, so a lot of some people have been asking. Our friend that was at the school, Charlie, is going to be in Minnesota, and he was saying, "What are some good ways?" He wants to be more rotational, so mm -hmm. this uh, goes with him. What are some good ways where if you're stuck inside over the next three months or so, and you can make like kind of a practice plan, and you want at the end of the winter to have a more rotational movement? What would be like a good plan of action for that? Like let's let's say somebody they can like hit balls into a net or something on the wind. If they can hit balls into the net, then by all means do this and video about every fifth swing. And then make sure that you're 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 doing the things that we're talking about and you're not falling off, you know, off the deep end here somewhere. But um, you know, you can always do the stick drill. Um, if you're inside you don't have a garage um, and you don't have room for a stick, uh -huh. right? Maybe you can grab it, stick, keep your posture, and then keep your posture, and then grip it here, and then do the same thing. One, two, release over here. Never let enough thrash. And, and, and you don't, you look, we're not desiring a lot of speed, right? Because, look, once we start adding speed to this, right? Am I manually trying to hold this angle? No. It's happening as a byproduct of me landing getting my left side out of the way, if this is still moving, I, there's no way I can get rid of this angle. Okay. But if, if I get up here like this and I stop here, I'm gonna let this go and chunk the snot out of it, or I'm gonna jump, which is what we see most of the time. Now, do you think that, because there's some debate about this in the motor learning world, do you think that doing things slow, like, the, like we're doing now, and then once you want to do it fast, is it a brand new program or can it, have you seen it had success where they've, they've built it up? I think there's it. two ways. Either one, yeah. under duress, i.e. with a band or a w cable of weight or whatever uh -huh. to build your different motor pattern. But the biggest thing is this. If you don't have confidence where that club face is, yeah. you, I don't care how beautiful you flow. Okay. You ain't doing it. Because the first one that goes in somebody's backyard is the last time you're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to do whatever you got to do to square that face. So if you have great structure, good extension, this thing is in the perfect spot for you to turn literally as hard as you want to. Mm. Face, face, face. Okay. Get the face first, mm -hmm. then build your pattern around the face. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so I'm gonna grab my driver. It's here. Because people are, it's not a, really a video. Because people say, well, what about for driver? The the videos that we did in at Stadium Golf Center, 
you and I. Uh -huh. People loved how open I was mm -hmm. in those, and they're like, "Wow, how did he do that?" And like, you became really known for helping people get open. That last one I hit, I know for sure I was probably pretty open. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, if somebody's same thing, if somebody's looking to get more rotational in the winter and build a plan, but then also wants to do some of these drills, like how, how can we add in like driver? For you, as a good example is earlier when we were working on this, we know that your left side of your body shuts down. So as a result of that, your hips tilt this way, you're way back over here, and then you have to go this way. Right, it's like a chicken or egg thing. It's either I go like this and then I go like this. Yes. And then have to throw or yes. what was the other or one? More or than, more, more than that. When this goes this way, you go that way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this crowds this space yes. and then I have to throw so then, my arm. So then you go like this right. and then it blocks to the right or big snap hooks. Right? Now, when we, how we fixed you was we made you feel that when you got to the top, when you landed left and your chest started to come back over, you were pushing this leg as hard as you could that way this little rainbow to kind of rainbow that left foot and the harder you pushed it the faster and straighter the ball went oh, so I wonder if there's a way you can do almost like little chippy well, rainbow why not? One? try it okay so I'm gonna go to the top add flexion right here yep. and then push exactly um, I'm actually gonna start pushing earlier but yep. that's the that's the parts and pieces of it but there's uh, some serious overlap in there so Exactly. That's that great. Really good. Yeah. Because, you know, let's be honest, right? We know that you get the three forces in the ground, right? We know you get a horizontal, vertical, and torque. Yes. Right? So, do I torque too early? No. Best players in the world actually have some lateral, vertical turn. They actually land, and as it, they're torquing, it's actually going vertical at the same time this direction. You always have to apply a force the opposite direction of your rotation. Just like in baseball, you're not going like this to hit the baseball. You're actually landing and pushing that way to cause my body to turn. Okay. That's what you just did there. Okay, gotcha. By exaggerating it by pushing your foot back. The other thing that I wanted to talk about too, that we could do a bigger thing about later, is how, like if this is the midline of my body, and we want to get rid of this throw where the throw kind of goes across our midline mm -hmm. here. It's important to be here and keep like, if this is on the, my right pecker, so feeling where it stays there and it doesn't get yes, crossed past Yes, 100%. Okay. Now, the other thing, when you did that, do that same thing again. Okay. Now, notice how far this has moved around the corner. Yeah, it's like going this way. Yes, sir. Yeah, not a well. Yeah, or not up like this. Oh, not just. Yeah, but. it's around whoosh, this way. So I'm gonna go here, here, there. That's right. Right into the sweet spot. Okay. Face is just a little open. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you come down, we talked about this earlier too, is your hand likes to be like this so the face is open. Remember we talked about it? Yeah. When this is an extension, you're not like this. Remember we talked about this earlier? Yeah, so Ed, Ed's saying, Mike, that at the top, sometimes I'll go In an attempt like to that. shallow it, in an attempt, but, to, in an attempt to shallow it, you'll go like this and the face is open. Mm -hmm. We just want this to go boom. Oh, like it almost feels like it's it's doing this, but it's also hooding it a little bit. What you think? It, well, it's not hooding; it's actually squaring it to the arc. Okay. But yeah. Okay. That was this. There. That's right. There you go. Okay. Started more online. Yeah. You didn't apply enough force to. So, if somebody's anymore. doing this at home and they want a takeaway, for, we have some really good takeaways for um, with the stick drill and then also stage one and two on the iron. Now, with, with driver, what are we telling them to do? We're telling them to go to the, do, do what? Go to the top and. It's boom, basically boom. the same thing. We're just doing it on an amplified scale. Okay. Right? So, in other words, you're getting yourself to the top. I'll get over here. You're getting yourself to the top in a really nice athletic. You're really expanding this side. You're really stretching your spiral line. And then in transition, as you're landing, you're letting this happen. 
hmm. getting out of the way. Gosh, that's really, really open. So that's a lot of pieces. At, uh, uh, so generally, we're trying to go about like armpit high to armpit high and feel the depth on both both mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. The depth of the hips. Yeah. So it's two pushes on the ground. Bingo. That was really good. There you go. And for me, like if I had a, a net that I was hitting into, I'd put like a stripe on it and be like, I want to be on that stripe or on the right side of that stripe, right? Yep. We don't want that ball to ever start to the left of it. Okay. So I go. Bingo. That was really good. So then as we're adding speed, it's like, it's everything's the same. And what you were telling me is like, we're just turning the volume up on, on all this Turn stuff. the volume right. up on the radio. So, and just, but the time, but the, the timing is the same. I think w when we try to go uh, turn the volume up, sometimes it's like everything gets like really rushed and shorter. It's like, you exactly. Know, still, You're not giving yourself a chance to unwind. Okay. So it's still the same patience, just a, a little bit bigger volume. Let's see if we can. To draw. It's okay. I really feel like that that left side is getting out of the way. Land, rainbow this, get your left side out of the way. Okay, left so you're side you're towing out. it, not throwing it. Uh, you can stick one in for the there you that was go. Good. Much better. Okay, cool. All right, from throw to toe. Maybe that'll be the title. There you go. Thanks for watching everybody. If you're interested in learning more about Ed, follow him on Instagram. I'll put the link to his Instagram here and, and the best way to connect with him is at milolinesgolf.com. Ed is a certified instructor with Milo Lines and he does a lot of the assessments and contact work with the membership there. There's a special code for Milo Lines Golf if you're a Be Better Golfer that you can use called Be Better Milo is the code for that. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Bye.